Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord and happy Resurrection Sunday to you. This is Pastor Bell coming to you from the Last Days Church in the city of Nashville, Tennessee. And oh, what a day this is. This is a day to look up. This is a day to believe. This is a day to trust the Lord because this is Resurrection Sunday. Amen, amen. We are excited and, and thankful unto the Lord for this opportunity to be able to come into your houses and to share with you in Jesus' name on this resurrection morning, amen, what the Lord has done for us. Oh, we got a lot of stuff to be thankful for. This is a day of hope. This is a day of expectation. This is a day of faith. And so this morning in Jesus' name, we bless the Lord in Jesus' name. I hope that everybody's feeling well. I hope that everybody's doing good. So this is the time to get your family. Listen, cut the TV off, cut the radio off, cut the music down. Go get your Bible, gather your family together. And we're going to go before the Lord this morning in Jesus' name. We're worshiping Jesus' name. And I pray that everyone, amen, has had a blessed week. I pray that everyone had a good good Friday in Jesus' name. We learned about Passover. We studied the Passover. And now we do the Passover and we're getting ready to get up in Jesus' name. So this morning, amen, as we prepare, amen, to worship God this morning in Jesus' name, I want to go before the Lord with a word of prayer. And so if you would, in Jesus' name, if you will touch and agree with me as we prepare to go before the Lord in a word of prayer, and we're going to touch and agree. And we're praying, we're praying. This is a time of prayer. We're praying in Jesus' name for the family members that we've lost during this time. We're praying in Jesus' name for the doctors and for the nurses and for all of those that are going in harm's way. And we're praying for our leaders and for our president and for our country and for the world. We're praying in Jesus' name that the Lord would touch them and that the Lord would give them the strength that is so needed in Jesus' name in order for us to come through. And we will come through. We're going to get up because this is Resurrection Sunday. Amen? Amen. So, if you would, grab your uh, uh, your family members in Jesus' name. If you're watching in Jesus' name, just stretch out your hand and touch and agree with me in Jesus' name as we prepare to pray in Jesus' name. And right now, bow that head in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you this morning, God, we give you a resurrected praise. We give you resurrected glory. We give you resurrected honor, God. We bless you, O oh God, in Jesus' name for the wonderful things that you have done. And we thank you in Jesus' name, God. Hallelujah. For giving us victory on every side, God. We thank you in Jesus' name, God. Hallelujah. That because of what you did, God, we have hope, oh God. And we have a hope that goes beyond the grave. This morning in Jesus' name, as we prepare to worship you, God. We ask you, God, to suspend everything in the house, suspend everything around us, God, that your glory would be revealed, oh God. We ask you to touch and bless as only you can, oh God. And we ask you to draw us closer, oh God, as we draw closer to you this morning in Jesus' name. And I pray in Jesus' name, for all of the churches and all of the pastors and all of the worshipers, oh God, that are paying God right now homage unto you this morning in Jesus' name. Father, we declare that you alone are worthy of praise. You alone are worthy of glory. You alone are worthy of honor, oh God. And Lord, we lift up the world. We lift up our leaders. We lift up our doctors, our nurses. We lift up, God, this entire circumstance, God. And Father, because you got up, how Hallelujah. We believe that we're going to get up. So we thank you, we bless you, and we do praise you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody clap their hands and give the Lord a praise in Jesus' name. And so this morning, this morning, it is an honor. It is a privilege. Uh, it is a pleasure to be able to come before you this morning and to share, amen, out of God's word this morning. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you face with. This is a day that gives every last one of us hope. And sure enough, we have a hope that goes beyond the grave. Amen. This is a day for us to rejoice, to lift, amen, our hands, to lift our hearts, and to give God the glory that only God deserves in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. And for those of you 
in Jesus' name, uh, that are tuning in in Jesus' name. Amen. We are located at 2311 Foster Avenue in the city of Nashville. And amen. We're believing, amen, that God is getting ready to do some awesome stuff. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to share something with you in Jesus' name. Uh, I was in prayer. I was in prayer. And as I was praying and as I was crying out to the Lord, I want to tell the church to get ready. I want to tell the church, amen, to get prepared because there's revival that is coming to this land. There's revival that's coming to the world. Whenever the world goes through a major catastrophe or the world deals with major issues, God always sends revival. And oftentimes, it is that catastrophe that starts the revival. And as I was praying, I could hear God just hollering, revival is coming. Amen. Revival is coming. And so get ready. Amen. We're going higher in the Lord and more people are getting ready to come to God than ever came before. So we bless the Lord for that. We thank the Lord in Jesus' name. And I don't know about you. Amen. You ought to take advantage of this time. You ought to take advantage of this opportunity to draw nigh unto God as he draws nigh unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this morning in Jesus' name, I'm not going to weary your patience. This morning, I'm not going to take up all your time. I do thank the Lord for you giving us the privilege and the opportunity to come into your house and to share with you. Oh, honey, we get ready to stand up on your couch. We get ready to walk through your dining room. Amen. We get ready to give God glory in your house in Jesus' name. Amen. We bless him. We bless him. We bless him. Very quickly, amen, in Jesus' name, uh, for those of you who have your Bibles, I want to look at the Word of God in Jesus' name. And we are very simply, we're going to go to the book of Romans, and we're going to go to the 8th chapter in Jesus' name. We're going to be looking at Romans, the 8th chapter in Jesus' name. And so, as we begin to go there, amen, grab your Bibles in Jesus' name. And the scripture is very simple, amen, it's very simple in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 8, amen, and we're going to look at the 11th verse. And it reads, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Amen. Let me read that again. Amen. Amen. We'll move. We'll move. We'll move. I tell you what, this morning I want to share with you a powerful word this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. And that word is simply, I can get up to. Oh, I wish somebody would give God a praise. I wish somebody would give God some glory. Tell somebody in your house that I can get up to. Tell them you can get up as well. Amen. Let somebody know, hallelujah, that because of what the Lord did, that you can get up from whatever you're dealing with. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. It doesn't matter what you've been through. Whatever it is, you ought to declare that I'm getting up and I'm getting up with some power. I'm getting up with some strength. I'm getting up with some joy in my soul. Amen. We bless the Lord in Jesus' name. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. Today is one of those days that the world celebrates. And we are celebrating nothing other than the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is the pinnacle, the summit, and the apex of Christian religion. And it is because of this very thing that the Lord did that we can celebrate life, that we have hope, that we have expectation. And I want to tell you something. It ain't no sense in living life and you ain't got expectation. There's no sense in living life and you don't expect and have faith for God to move and to show up and to do some amazing things in your life. Because of what Jesus did, you can get up too. I'm going to get up. And guess what? Guess what? All of us have been through traumatic things. We're going through some traumatic things right now. We're dealing with some heavy things right now. Amen. We've had sickness and we, and you know, we, we, we've been in various places. We've been in bondage and we, we've been behind closed doors, but none of those things can stop God from being who he is 
And because he did what he did, you can come out of all of those places, all of those things that have hindered you, all those things that have stopped you, you can come out of them in Jesus' name. Amen. So let, let's, let's go into the word of God. Now, Paul is the writer here in the book of Romans, and uh, he tells us something that's very uh, relative to really getting up. And uh, I can't read all of it, can't go through all of it, but we're going to look at verse 11 just, just to get a little bit of more insight. So he says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. And so uh, it's unique that the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul puts a contingency there. And that contingency is the word if. Because I have to be real with you. He says, if the spirit that raised him up dwell in you. But the truth of the matter is, it is a possibility that that spirit is not in everybody. I have to be clear. I have to be relative. And I want to say this. I want to say this. Uh, the days of preaching fluff and no substance and making people feel good, those days are gone. We got to tell people the unadulterated truth. They need the pure word of God because that's the only thing that's going to save them. That's the only thing that's going to deliver them. So I have to be somewhat candid. He says if he creates a contingency because the other part of if is that if it does not dwell in you, that it won't quicken your mortal body. Quicken is the Greek word zaro perero, which means to give life and to animate. So he's saying that if his spirit doesn't dwell in a man, you're not going to be the recipient of the benefit of getting up. Amen. So, 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 so he says if that spirit dwell in you, it'll raise you and it'll quicken your mortal body. But uh, the scripture that we did not read, I want to bring out something in Jesus' name. Uh, the scripture brings out very clearly here that if any man have not the spirit of Christ, that he is none of his. And so here again, that validates the contingency. But a lot of people will say, oh, well, I, I, I believe. And a lot of people say, oh, well, I go to church. And a lot of people will say a lot of different things. But I, I got to be very real with you. We did not ask or he did not ask you about your religion. He asked you about the spirit of God. And I'm reminded of, of, of Paul when he comes into the coast of Ephesus in Acts chapter number 19. And the Bible says that he runs into some disciples and, and he asked them a very relative question uh, uh, that's relative to where a lot of us are. Because they say that they believe. They say that, oh, I trust God. But Paul asked a powerful question, and that question was, have you received since you believe? And that's what we need to know today. We don't want to hear about whether or not you go to church. We don't want to hear about whether or not you give tithes or you do this. We want to know if you have the Spirit of God. Because that's the only thing that's going to allow you to be able to get up from whatever circumstance that life may throw you. You got to have the spirit of God living down on the inside. You know what? I'm getting excited right now because I recognize this. Amen. We may not be able to go to church, but baby, that don't mean we can't have church. We may not be able to go in the sanctuary, but somebody said, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Oh my God. Hallelujah. And so he says this, that if that same spirit be in you, amen, amen, that, that raised Christ from the dead, it, it says that it dwell in you. And this is where I want to take a and jump a fence. It's got to be able to live in you. It's got to be able to move in you. And the reason I say that is this, is because a lot of us, amen, amen, when we get in trouble, we're ready to break the glass and call God. When we need a miracle, we're ready to rub on our lamp and get God to come out. But it can't be like that. It, you got to have a relationship where he dwells in you and you dwell in him. And anytime you get ready to move, you say, God, do what you want to do and have your 
way. He's got to be able to live in you. His word has got to have a place in you. You got to dwell in him and his word dwell in you. And oh my God, when you get to that place, you can ask things and he'll bring it to pass. He'll make it happen for you. Oh, praise the name of our God. So he said that if that same spirit dwell in you, he said it's going to quicken your body. It's going to give you life. It's going to animate you. Amen. What do you mean give you life? Quicken me. It means that when I'm in dead situations, it means that I'm when, when I'm in circumstances and when I'm dealing with issues that are crippling to my soul, when I'm going through things, amen, that I got to go through. He's saying that if that spirit that raised Christ up from the dead is in me, he's saying that I'll be able to get up also. I wish I had a witness that would clap their hands and tell God thank you. So he, he continues and he lets them to understand that you got to live by the spirit. You can't live in the flesh. Can I tell you this? Amen, church. That is time out for living in the carnal realm of mind. See, because he also told us to be carnally minded is to be deaf. He said, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And I don't know about you. I need life and I definitely want peace while I'm living this life. Oh, praise the name of our God. So as he begins to tell us and take us into the word of God, he lets us understand that it is that spirit that is going to be the quickening element or the life giving element, amen, that animates our life, that causes us to get back up when we should stay down. Oh, praise the name of our God. Now, guess what? If anybody should have stayed down, it was Jesus. If anybody shouldn't have been able to get up, oh my God, it was him. All that he went through before he even died, all that he dealt with, amen, before they crucified him was enough to keep somebody down. Y'all, hey man, got to give God a praise because when you look at Jesus, he is not the Jesus that's been on your wall. He is not the Jesus that they make look so good and the depiction of, amen, Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo. He is neither one of them. The Bible says, amen, there is no beauty in him that when we see him, that we should desire him. That he was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. Oh uh, my God, can I tell you that he went through in order for you to be able to get up. Can I tell you that he paid the ultimate price for you to be able to be brought out. Oh uh, my God, right now. We're worried about coronavirus and we're worried about amen, the diseases that are going around. But I want to give you a word this morning. And that word is that by his stripes we were healed. He paid the price for every one of us to be healed. Uh, from sickness, from cancer, from diabetes, from corona. Oh uh, my God, the Bible said that he was beat with 39 stripes, save one. Uh, God, now let's go a little further because as you begin to look at, amen, the field of medicine and you begin to understand that there are 39 classifications of sickness. And the Bible said that he was beat with 39 stripes. So now I understand that I can come out because by his stripes, I got victory. By his stripes, I'm going to give him glory. By his stripes, I'm going to give him praise. Somebody clap your hands and tell our God thank you. Oh, praise the name of our God. But as we go a little bit further, so the objective of church, the objective of a relationship with Christ is that the Spirit of God lives in you, that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Uh, can I tell you this? It ain't about getting stuff and things. It ain't about that kind of stuff. The Bible tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these things will be added unto us. Oh, praise God. Ah, uh, God, we can't just seek God when we need things and when we need stuff. Ah, uh, my God, we got to seek God for his face. We got to seek him for a true relationship. That's the only way we're able to get up. So the objective is, is that we get to the place, hallelujah, where we're able to get up from anything. So I want to take you somewhere in the scripture that's very powerful. And I think Paul articulates this thought very wonderfully. 
It ought to be the desire. It ought to be the aim. And it ought to be the passion of every true born again believer. Ah, my God, that we get to the place that nothing can keep me down. Sickness can't keep me down. Unemployment can't keep me down. Depression can't hold me down. Nothing can hold me back because of what he did when he got up. Amen. Let's go to Philippians, the third chapter, and we're going to look at what the word of God says. The Bible says this. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 3, we're going to look at the 10th verse. The Bible says that I might know him. Now, the objective of coming to Christ and to relate with Christ and being in church is to know him. The Greek word here is genosko, is to understand, to fully grasp, to comprehend. I want to know him. And guess what? God wants you to know him. He wants you to know his voice. He wants you to understand his spirit and his movement. So the objective is to know him, that I might know him. And this is where it gets deeper and the power of his resurrection. So think about what he's saying here. I want to know him. I want to get intimate with him. I want to, amen, get to understand him. But I want to also get to the place where I am positioned, where I have the power of resurrection resting in me. Now, Romans said it a different way. It said if the spirit of him be in you, it's going to raise you. So Paul says this. The power, the dunamis of resurrection, the ability to get back up, the ability to revive when I've been knocked out, the ability to come back when nobody's expecting me to come back. Tell somebody I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Oh my God. I wish you would say it right now. Lift your hand and say I'm coming back. This ain't my final end. This ain't where I'm going to end up at. It ain't over yet. God is only repositioning me to come back with more power, with more strength, with more praise. And if you think I shouted before this, wait till he bring me out. He says the power of his resurrection. And look at this. A lot of us want resurrection. A lot of us want power. But power costs. The cost of it is pain. Hello? Anointing cost. The cost of the anointing is agony. Ah, my God. Uh, yeah, let me be very relative. Yesterday, a lot of us watched the story of the Clark sisters, uh, my homegirls from Detroit, amen? We watched that story. But can I tell you this? They are some of the baddest singing sisters on the face of the earth. But they paid a price to be that anointed. They paid a price in order to do what they do now. And so when they sing, they got a right to sing. And guess what? Some of us are anointed. Don't look at us funny and don't look at us as us and that you don't appreciate us because you don't know what we've been through. You don't know the hours that we spent in, in, in prayer. You don't know the nights that we had tears rolling down our face. You couldn't see the days when we, when we laid in the bed in fetal position and asked God to hold us because what we was going through through was crushing us, but you can't get oil if you don't crush the olives. You can't get grapes, I mean wine, unless you crush the grapes. And some of us have paid the price for our anointing. And some of us are being broken right now. Some of us are being made right now. But it ain't over for us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. When we get, amen, up from this, you're going to see a different level of anointing resting on us. He says this. Because I got to know him through the fellowship of his suffering. A lot of us don't want to suffer. A lot of us don't want to go through. But the only way you're going to get to reigning with him is that you got to suffer with him. You got to go through with him. Amen. And oftentimes, it is through my suffering that I, I, I see a different perspective of who God really is. 
I start to understand him and see him in a different light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'll never know him as a healer if you ain't never needed to be healed before. Hallelujah. He reveals himself through what we go through. But look at what Paul said. I want to I want to have the fellowship, the cornelia, which means that I want to enter into the course of his suffering. And why do I got to enter into the course of his suffering? I have to go into the course of his suffering and have fellowship with his suffering because I cannot get to the power of his resurrection if I don't go through the channel of his suffering. So he says this, amen, being made conformable. And what happens here is when I go through conformable is the Greek word sumo force. And what it means is I begin to take on the shape and I begin to take on the form of his death. I begin to take on the shape and the form of his suffering because if I take on the shape and the form of his suffering, that means there's going to come a day when I take on the shape and the form of his resurrection. Amen? Because when he appear, I'm going to appear with him in glory. When he show up, I'm going to show up with him. Hallelujah. When he come through, I'm coming through with him. The Bible says this, I'm being made conformable unto his death. And then look at Paul's objective. We've heard this term before. I believe it was Brother Malcolm X that said, by any means necessary. But Malcolm didn't say that before Paul. Paul says in verse 11, he says that if by any means I might obtain. In other words, Paul is saying, I want to get to the place that nothing can hold me down. I want to get to the place where nothing hinders me from having breakthrough. Amen? And so, he says, by any means, it don't matter what I got to go through. It don't matter what I got to deal with. It don't matter who I have to lose. The only thing that matters is that I get to the place of resurrection. And why, why, why? Because that's the only thing that means anything. We're finding out that everything superficial has no value anymore. Everything superficial don't mean anything. And, and guess what? All of the things that we fear, all of the things, amen, that could be detriment to us, amen, Jesus conquered them when he got up from the grave. Let me take you a little bit further. So, amen. So by any means, we got to get to the resurrection. But let me share something with you. Jesus, there's so many prophetic words that relate to him. There are so many prophetic words, amen, that are brought out to him. But I want to show you something. What did he do in order to be able to get us to the place of resurrection? He had to go through death. He had to go through the grave. But guess what? Death in the grave can't keep him. And if you connected and that spirit is in you, death in the grave can't keep you. Hallelujah. I wish I had a witness that would say something. Death in the grave can't hold us down. I reminded of an old song we used to sing where Jesus said, go ahead and put the nails in my hand. Go ahead and crucify. Go ahead. He said, I'll rise again. Three days later, he said, I'll rise again. He said, because ain't no power on this earth that can hold me down. There's nothing on this earth that can stop us from getting up. Nothing on the earth. But look at this. I want to take you somewhere. The book of Hosea tells us something very interesting. And, and, and look at what it says in Hosea. I'm going to go to the 13th chapter. Hosea chapter number 13. And we're going to look at only one verse. Only one verse. Uh, verse number 14. Hosea 13 and 14. Now, contextually, this scripture is talking to Ephraim. And, and it is because Ephraim has got out of place and Ephraim has forsaken God and Ephraim has sinned. And, and, and so the Lord passes judgment. And can I tell you this? Can I tell you this? This is a grim reality, y'all. This is a grim reality. That some of the things that we are dealing with, it is a product of our own doing as humanity. And God uses it to bring us back. So sometimes God has to chasten us to make us bend our knee. Sometimes God has to chasten us to make us turn from our ways. Amen? And so in the book of Hosea, chapter number uh, 13, verse 14, I want you to document this and read it with me in Jesus' name. Look at what the prophet says. He says, 
I will ransom them from the power of the grave. So when I look at the word ransom, you know a ransom is what you pay to release somebody. There's a price. Uh, you, you've seen all the movies that we've seen. They kidnap somebody who's a rich kid, and, and they kidnap and they say they want $5 million. They want the $100 million put in the bank, or we're going to kill them. Amen? Well, the devil had kidnapped humanity. He had us hostage. We're, and we were locked up and tied up. And, and he's calling and he's, and he's telling God that I'm going to kill them. And the Lord says, I'll, I'm going to ransom them from the power of the grave. What does that mean? That means I'm going to pay the price for each one of them to be able to get up again. And so he says this, I'm going to ransom them from the power of the grave. I'm going to redeem them from death, which means he's going to buy us back from death. But we thought that once death hit, that that was the final end. But we, if, for those of us who know our Bible, that death is not the final end. Even I can get up from there if the spirit of God is in me. I can get up from there if the spirit of God resides in me and lives in me. And I want to tell somebody something in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We got to get to the place where we are no longer fearful of death. Because guess what? I can get up from there too. Death is no longer my enemy. Death is no longer holding me back. Because when I become born again and when I get the spirit of God, amen, I have something on the inside of me that is more powerful than death. And as I begin to know him and I begin to walk with him, you ought to get to the place, amen, where you're no longer fearful of dying. None of us want to die. None of us want to leave. But my objective is that if I do got to leave, it is my gain. I just got over. Because to live is Christ, but to die is my gain. I wish I had a witness that and say hallelujah because the reality of it is amen we're not just following Jesus for fish and low we're following him because we love him but we done got to a place that nothing can hold us down nothing can hinder us nothing can stop us from getting up this ain't the first time we've been knocked down amen and it ain't the last time we'll be knocked down this ain't the first time that we've been through amen and I want to tell somebody something you got to look back and see what God has done for you. You got to look back and see where God has brought you from. You got to recognize that if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, that you never would have made it. You got to understand, hallelujah, that the Lord did it before and somebody say he'll do it again. I want to tell somebody that God is going to let you get up again. I want to tell somebody that God is going to bring you out again. I want to tell somebody that God is going to open another door. This is not your final end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Bless his name. So, he says, I'm going to ransom them from the grave. And then look what he says. He says, I will redeem them from death. And then he starts to talk to death. He says, oh death, I will be thy plagues. He says, Oh, grave, I will be thy destruction. What he's telling us is, is that I'm going to destroy death and I'm going to destroy the grave that it won't be able to hold you back. Hallelujah. Ain't that powerful? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he destroys it. And the Bible says that in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that the last enemy to be destroyed is the enemy of death. So let's go a little bit further. So he tells us that in Hosea. Now, we're getting ready to take it and get a little bit deeper. Now, you say, well, how did he get, redeem us? How did, what did he do? He paid the price with blood. Uh, he paid the price, amen, with his own blood, amen. And the Bible lets us to understand that we were not redeemed with corruptible things, with silver and gold and with the blood of heifers and bulls and turtle dove, but we was redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, amen. 
And so, as I look at this in Jesus' name, I'm getting up too. I'm getting up. Amen. As you go to the book of Revelations, I want to I want to show you something now. And I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. I pray that I've blessed somebody so far. As we look at the book of Revelations, chapter number one, amen, and we're going to look at the 18th verse. Look at what happens here. So y'all know the story. Y'all know the story how Jesus was arrested. Uh, he was betrayed with a kiss. He's arrested. He goes back and forth to courts, back and forth. They cross-examine him. They ridicule him. They spit on him. They pull out his beard. Amen. They do all of these things to him. They whoop him. Amen. With a flag room. They whoop him until his flesh is open. They whoop him until ribbons of bleeding flesh. Amen. It's just all over his body. Amen. His eyes are bloodshot. Amen. His lungs, amen, are almost exhausted. Amen. He's sweating. He's been forsaken by his friends. It ain't no way that he ought to be able to get up. It ain't no way that he ought to be able to come back. It ain't no way that he ought to be able to come and say, amen, what he's getting ready to say. Ah, oh, my God. But he he does it and he, and he gets up and you know the story. Didn't nobody take his life. The Bible said that he laid down his life and no greater love have a man than this, than he'll lay down his life. And, I, and as I begin to think about Pat, sometimes in order for people to live, you got to lay your own life down. Sometimes in order for people to get a breakthrough, you got to lay your life on the line for other folks to live. Amen. 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 Sometimes because love is sacrificial. Love will put itself in harm's way. Love will stand in front of the loaded gun. Love will stand in front of the speeding car that's coming your way. Love will take the hit. Amen. In order to save the person that they love. Oh, I wish I had some mothers that would say hallelujah right now. Uh, but look at what Jesus did. The Bible says this in the book of Revelations. Chapter number one and the 18th verse. Look what he says, and it's about to get good. I think I'm going to shout right now. The Bible says this, amen, in the 18th verse of chapter one. He says, I am he that liveth and was dead. In other words, he letting John the Revelator know, I was dead, but I'm alive right now. Hallelujah. Tell somebody I'm alive. I, I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Somebody say I'm alive. Why is that so exciting? Because there was one time when I was dead. We've already had a spiritual revelation, resurrection, excuse me. What are you saying, Pastor Bell? What I'm saying, some of us don't already got up, amen, from some dead places. What do you mean? We was dead in sin, dead in trespasses, dead in our mess, dead in our stuff. We was knee deep in it. We was caught. We didn't know a way out. We couldn't deliver ourselves if we wanted to, amen. But the Lord, because of what he did, uh, opened the prison doors and allowed us to come out. Open the prison doors and allowed us to live again. Open the prison doors and brought us back from the edge of destruction. Hallelujah. And we bless him for it. Uh, he says, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And look at what he says. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and the keys of death. And that's powerful. Because guess what? He had to go to the grave. He had to go to death and head, through death and hell in order to get the keys. Now, let's be, let's be real. Let's be real. Let's be real. When you first get a pair of keys made, the first thing you want to do is put them into the cylinder and turn it to make sure that the key that was made works. You want to make sure that your key is operable. So, praise the name of our God. I, I begin to look at this and I got, I got happy. I got excited because the truth of the matter was, is when, amen, and if the devil would have knew what he was doing, the Bible said that he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Sometimes people don't realize that when they ostracize you, when they beat you down, when they push you out, sometimes people don't realize, amen, that when they do what they do to you, they only opening you up to another dimension of glory. They only opening 
bring you up to another dimension of power. So when the devil, amen, crucified him, amen, and let him go to hell, let him go through death, the devil did the wrong thing. Can't, can't you see, amen, the devil and his imps, amen, and his demons, get ready to celebrate that we got him. Get ready to celebrate that it's all over. Get ready to celebrate that he's gone. Get ready to celebrate that we ain't got to worry about him no more. So they put him in the grave and how God, he's in the grave. The first day, don't nothing happen. The second day, ain't, the, ain't nothing going on. Oh, but on the third day, early on a Sunday morning, hallelujah, he got up with all power in his hand. Oh my God. And when he got up, he took the devil's keys right out of his pocket. When he got up, he took the devil's authority. He broke the back of the enemy. He put the enemy under our feet. Oh my God. And somebody ought to stop and put the enemy under their feet right now. You ought to put the devil in his place and tell him that I can get up too. That because he got up, I'm an heir and a joint heir. I'm getting up with him. Hallelujah. So as he got up, let me show you this as I close. Hallelujah. I'm getting up. I'm getting up. I wish I had some people that would tell somebody I'm getting up. I'm getting up. I'm getting up from depression. Amen. Amen. Depression is real. Amen. Agony is real. Sometimes we internalize stuff and it weighs our spirit down. Amen. And it gets us heavy. But you ain't staying in that depressed place. I break it. I bind that spirit of depression. And you get up and you lift your hands and you tell God that I thank you and that I love you for being so good to me. Hallelujah. I know you're broken. I know you've been through hardship and you may have lost some things and lost some people. Amen. And we may not understand everything. And I ain't got to understand everything. But the Bible said we have a high priest that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. In all points was tempted like you and I are, but yet without sin. He understands what you've been through. He understands what you're going through and you're going to get up from it too. Hallelujah. But let me show you something in Jesus' name. And I'm going to be finishing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Matthew, I want to show you something. Some people don't catch this. I said that as soon as Jesus got the keys, he wanted to make sure that they worked. See, oftentimes we look at Lazarus and we understand that Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. And Jesus had resurrection power before he was crucified. Because you remember in John chapter 11, after he raised us from the dead, he let them know that I am the resurrection. Amen. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live again. He, he let them understand. They going to get up too. They going to get up again. It don't even matter if you die. You going to get up again. Hallelujah. The Bible says, amen, that, he, that, that the dead in Christ going to rise first. They going to get up too. Amen. Look at this. Matthew 27. And we're going to look at the 52nd and the 53rd verse. Because I said as soon as Jesus got the keys, he wanted to make sure that they was working. Hallelujah. Matthew 50, 27, 52. Now, this is him dying, but look at it. Matthew interjects this. And Matthew is the only one that interjects this. And this is why you got to cross reference the Gospels because all of them give us the story of him dying and the resurrection. But Matthew is the only one that captures this element. It says in Matthew 27, 52, and the graves were open. What do you mean the graves is open? Read it, it's your Bible. And the graves were open. Because as soon as he got the keys, he started opening graves. He started unlocking them that had them held down. Oh my God, somebody say I can get up too. He says, and the graves were open and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. They got up. He got up and they got up as well. He got up and they got victory as well. He went free and they went free as well. And he that the son is set free is free indeed. The Bible says this, verse 53, 
and they came out of the graves. And I want to tell somebody, you get ready to come out your dead places. You get ready to come out them graveyards. You get ready to come out of them places where there's no life, there's no joy, there's no strength, there's no peace, there's no hope. You're getting ready to come out of them places. They came out the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Tell somebody you can get up to. You can get up to. I can get up to. There's nothing in Jesus' name that this world can give you or do to you that won't allow you to be able to get up. Hallelujah. We love you this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to come into uh, God's house. And you said God's house. Yes, I hope your house is God's house. I hope that you are a sanctuary. Hallelujah. But we bless the Lord in Jesus' name. And, and I'm, I'm believing that we're going to get up from this. Listen, listen. Corona is bad, but it ain't bad as God. We can get up from it. Hello? Sickness is bad, but it ain't bad as God. We can get up from it because Jesus took the power of death and hell and has the keys to it. And guess what? Because I'm in his family, he's going to give us a copy of his keys. Amen? Amen. I love you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let us have a word of prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we, amen, get ready, amen, to go in Jesus' name, we're going to have a word of prayer. I want to say to everyone in Jesus' name, happy Easter to you. Happy resurrection. I pray that you are enjoying in Jesus' name your day with your family. In Jesus' name, listen to this. We may not be able to go, amen, to the building, but we in the sanctuary right now. Amen. We may not be able to go to the building, but we can rejoice and celebrate and anticipate a resurrection in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you in Jesus' name. Again, our church, amen, is located at 2311 Foster Avenue in the city of Nashville, Tennessee. Also, you can visit us on our website, which is lastagechurch.org in Jesus' name. If you want to be a blessing to the house of the Lord, if you want to be a blessing to our ministry in Jesus' name, you can go to givelify.com and you can download that and then you'll search and do a uh, last day's church search. You'll see our icon pop up and you can digitally give in Jesus' name. But I, I, I want to pray in Jesus' name. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with your family. I want to pray for my family. I want to pray for the world in Jesus' name. Can I, can I, can I be transparent with you? I want to say this to you in Jesus' name. God is still sovereign. He is still in control. He reigns in the kingdom of men. He rules. But God is uh, resetting us. God is realigning us. And God is only setting the world up for his glory to be revealed. And I want to tell you this in Jesus' name. If you're outside the will of God, you need to get inside the will of God. Somebody said that the safest place is in the will of God. If you're a backslider, you need to lift your hands and fall on your knees and, and come back to God right now. He's at the roadside waiting for the prodigal son, waiting for the prodigal daughter. He loves you. And yes, he may be uh, angry or he may have been angry with you, but anger only lasts for a moment. His anger doesn't endure forever. Hello? I'm trying to get you to understand something. You can't continue in the things that you've been doing. It's time for the world to repent. Repentance is being poured out right now. Repentance, amen, is being set up right now. The world is crying out, amen. And I'm praying, I'm praying for everyone who's on the front line because you know what I recognize through prayer? That God is the only answer. God is the only answer. I'm praying for the doctors. I'm praying for the nurses. I'm praying that they'll come to the realization and recognize that we can't heal this. We can't cure this. We need God to give us insight. And he can do it. Because, you know, they're going for a scientific perspective. But God is the God of science. He's omniscient. He understands everything. He sees everything. So I'm, I'm praying for them. We're praying for the, the love of God, for the mercy of God, amen, that he would touch those doctors, touch those nurses, touch the people that are sick and afflicted. We, 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 I went to a funeral yesterday and had to stand 30, 40 feet away from everybody, uh, uh, had to stand 30, 40 feet away, amen, from, from the casket and from the deceased in Jesus' name. And, 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 and I recognize this is awful. But I realize God is doing something. God is trying to humble people. 
God is trying to bring us back to our face, back to our knees. We've forsaken God. We've toned down, we've torn down, amen, the foundations. We've changed the laws. We, we, we've allowed everything to go that is against God. And it's not just the United States, it's the world. God is humbling the world at this point. So I plead with you, I beg with you, repent, come back to God. Get back in that place with him. I plead with you, I beg you, let God be God. He'll fix it. God will fix it. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. In the middle of crisis, God always makes ways for his people. This message is not to the world. This message is to the saints of God. God always makes ways for his people. We will get up again. And sometimes, amen, in some of the most catastrophes, God actually uses it to transfer position, glory, power, and resource. And I'm believing that there's being a transfer right now. So right now, lift your hands in Jesus' name and pray with me. Grab, amen, grab the hands of those that's in your house in Jesus' name. They're in the house with you. You can't grab hands of strangers, but they're in the house with you. Grab the hands of those that's in the house with you in Jesus' name. We're going to go before God in prayer in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you this morning. We thank you for the sacrifice that you made that we might be able to get up. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name for going through the channel of death that death no longer has us in a fearful place. Thank you in Jesus' name for breaking the yoke of the enemy and destroying him according to your word. Your word declares that you went through death to destroy him that had the power of death, which was the devil. And so we ask you in Jesus' name to release that same power on us. God, right now, if somebody is not filled with your spirit, even in their living room, fill them with your spirit right now. Let your anointing, God, begin to permeate the atmosphere. Let your anointing, God, come into their homes, to their houses, into their hearts, oh God. And fill them, feed them, manna from on high until they want no more. God, we'll, we'll give you praise. We'll give you glory. We'll give you honor. And Lord, we just ask you now in Jesus' name, bless our leaders. Bless, bless, bless our president. Bless the leaders, oh God, kings and those that are in authority, prime ministers from around the world. Bless these world health organizations. Bless the CDC. Bless God as only you can do it in Jesus' name. Bless the hot spots that's in America, God. Bless New York, God. Bless Louisiana, God. Bless Detroit, God, Chicago. Move in a special way. Bless God right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we'll give you the praise. We'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor that you so deserve in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we thank the Lord for the opportunity to come into your house. I pray that it blessed you. I, I enjoy spending time with you in Jesus' name. And I want to tell you that myself... And Sister Bell, that we truly miss you guys. We truly love you guys. We are praying for you in Jesus' name. And I know that you're praying with us in Jesus' name. And I want to say this, amen. I want to plug this in Jesus' name. Uh, for those of you who are tuned in, amen, if you want to join us, amen, we have a call-in prayer line in Jesus' name. We also uh, are doing a Bible class uh, 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 on uh, streaming in Jesus' name. So we'll post that on social media and we'll reach out to you and let you know how you can get in touch with us through those mediums in Jesus name. So we thank you. We love you. We bless you. And somebody say, I can get up to God bless you. We'll see you in a little